Next up, Ron White. I'm not only the president of the Hair Club for Men. I'm a donor. Well, it's great to be in Los Angeles. I got here yesterday and went straight to the beach. Because you can learn things at the beach. I learned this today. If you see a girl in a bikini and you pick her up and hold her to your ear, you can hear her scream. Oh, man. I was in Vegas last week. First time ever in Vegas. It's kind of neat to see your name in the, on the big signs for the first time. I, I turned the corner by the Riviera Hotel and uh, looked up at the sign. There my name is in two-foot letters, Ron White. And right above that in three-foot letters, I'll never, never forget as long as I live, was prime rib dinner, $3.99. <laughs> You can do things in Las Vegas that you can't do in my hometown. Uh, there's some guys from the club took me to a topless bar. Now, I wasn't going to go because, well, you guys back me up on this. You've seen one woman naked. You want to see the rest of them. And, uh... <laughs> I ended up getting back to my hotel room like 7.30 the next morning, and I went up to the desk to leave a wake-up call, and I told the little girl behind the desk, I said, I need to leave a wake-up call for 7 o'clock, and she said, Mr. White, it's past 7. I said, no, the next one. <laughs> you got another one coming around, don't you? Why don't you just put me on that one? I hear they're running two a day through Nevada now. I, I got uh, thrown out of a bar in uh, Vegas. Now, when I say I got thrown out of a bar, I don't mean somebody asked me to leave and we walked to the door together and I said, bye, everybody. No, six bouncers hurled me out into a street like I was a human frisbee. <laughs> you know, them big old bouncers that go home every night, watch Roadhouse, and touch themselves? <laughs> right, for wearing a hat. I walk into this bar with a hat on, a $300 hat, this guy, take off the hat. And I was like, why? He goes, it's our rules, take it off. I was like, man, what's the deal? He goes, I'll tell you what the deal is. Dorks in this area wear hats. And we're trying to keep them out of our club. I said, oh, really? The only way we can tell where I'm from is if they have their hair cut like yours. <laughs> and he walked away, and then like an hour later, I put the hat back on. The guy comes over to me. Now, I'm six foot two, 235 pounds. This guy comes over to me, poking me in the shoulder with two fingers. He says, you're out of here. And I said, uh, I don't think so, Gomer. <laughs> And I was wrong. <laughs> they hurled me out of that bar. And then they squared off with me in the parking lot, and I backed down from the fight, because I don't know how many of them it would have taken to beat me up, but I knew how many they were going to use. <laughs> I was out there, somebody broke into my car while I was out there and stole my radio, which made me mad. I, I had to go to the insurance company. I was filling out these forms, and I got to the part on the form where it says, what kind of radio was it? And I told the old boy, I don't remember. And he said, uh, Mr. White, if you can remember what kind of radio it was, we'll know how much money to give you. <laughs> That's some good news right there. <laughs> I thought of a real expensive sounding brand, and I wrote that down, and he knew I was lying. He said, uh, Mr. White, I don't believe Rolex makes a ring. <laughs> It's a clock radio. <laughs> it's been a good year, been an eventful year. I became a father this year, and, uh, oh, thanks. Thanks very much. Uh, my son's name is Marshall. I named him after an amp. <laughs> I was gonna name him Peavy. You know, my wife is all bent out of shape because I was not the husband of the 90s, and I was like, sorry. You know that guy that gets into every little aspect of the pregnancy, every little detail of the pregnancy? We've been married for 10 years, and it was a surprise, and it scared me. And 
<laughs> kind of a neat deal. Our best friends had their baby at the same time, so we got to go through the pregnancy with them. But they were doing everything to get pregnant, you know what I mean? They were going to the fertility clinics. They were reading all the books. They were having sex, standing on their heads, facing east. <laughs> And he was so much more attentive to his wife's pregnancy, you know what I mean? That he just made me look bad. <laughs> oh, the second he found out she was pregnant, he wanted to look up his wife with an ear light. <laughs> and I have never wanted to look up my wife with an ear light. <laughs> All right, once we were drunk fishing. <laughs>